I don't know about you guys, but for years, I've always wondered, like, what is this video feature connector for? I've seen it on my video cards and you know every card I got I thought well how do I max out my system and you would take a card and you know you'd see that feature connector up there um, some car cards actually label it as feature and some don't but you'd see this extra connector and think to yourself what can I do with that I mean even in the early days you know you'd see this section of the card and go Ooh, something extra. You'd upgrade your RAM and you'd go, but what about this? What can I do with that? This one's a little bit more obvious. It says, well, there's your MPEG connector, but then they give you a second one. Okay, well, if that's my MPEG, well, what's that one for? And why does this Verge have two? Why does this Matrox card here have two connectors, a feature connector and a second one? By the way, this didn't go away with AGP. The early AGP cards, a lot of them had that feature connector as well. One of the most common uses in the early days of the 90s computing was for something like this. A classic example would say, say your, you know, standard card is a, you know, one megabyte Cirrus Logic, uh, you know, like this uh, 5430 here. You could attach this card in your PC and this would give you MPEG features. Uh, MPEG meaning, you know, fast, smooth playback of MPEG videos, AVI videos, things that support those codecs to speed up video playback, DVD playback, and that sort of thing. Now, what you might not know is if you only had this basic card, which obviously has absolutely zero 3D and very limited 2D, really. I mean, it's great for things like viewing PDF files, basic uh, documents, you know, basic Windows usage, and DOS games, obviously. But, I mean, anything beyond that is pretty much not what it's for. Great for Print Shop Pro and things like that, but not much more than that. Enter this and you're going to add on the ability to play smooth playback DVDs and, you know, video files you download off the web or off of a disc or wherever, or even MPEG DVDs or sorry, MPEG CDs. But here's something you might not know that's really cool. Some versions of this card and any with the impact chipset and some of the other types of MPEG cards actually added Direct3D or Direct2D drivers. So you would actually enhance like this card addressed on its own would actually add uh, acceleration, additional acceleration beyond just playing videos. So there are some interesting features by adding this. Now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well you have, you know, a basic card like this, you add on that feature. Now between these two, now you've got your 2D and your video speed playback all sorted out. Well, so why would some of the other cards have two connectors? Obviously, these cards, for example, are much more higher end than the standard run-of-the-mill Cirrus Logic or, you know, the run-of-the-mill. They're a little bit fancier than these basic cards. So the real reason that you would have two feature connectors on some of the fancier ones, you might want to run something like this. Now, <laughs> let's dive into this for a second. And then, by the way, this is not the only other thing you can do with uh, the feature connector, but there's an interesting sticker on this. It says on it here, no picture. I picked this up from a recycler and <laughs> recyclers don't know that this is not a video card. This is a professional capture card or sometimes called a frame grabber. So these are used in the video and movie industry and they allow you to capture um, at up to 60 frames or 100 frames, depending on how high a quality power that this is, uh, to capture video real time. Now, this is a capture card that captures in towards itself, but it can obviously capture off of one of the feature connectors. So, um, in live video broadcasting, but even just in your own home stuff, where say you wanted to do a, a screen recording or you wanted to ingest video from your camera or something like that you could ingest the video into this card, have it upstream or downstream uh, decoded, and then bring it into this, but you could still use one of those, uh, you know, DVD uh, or, you know, MPEG enhancers as well. Well, that's not the only thing you can do with these extra feature connectors on the professional cards. Say you had, you know, a decent quality Matrox card like this one, and you wanted to add 
DVD playback, which is a pretty common need back in the 90s, right? Let's say that you add your DVD playback, you're not interested in a frame grabber. So what would the average, even corporate or professional use be if you're not gonna use a frame grabber for basically turning things into or turning them out of uh, a camera uh, or into some kind of a professional recording? To answer that, this card is the perfect example. Look at this behemoth here. This thing is massive. This also came in a PCI that looked exactly the same. And it has this massive attachment on it. So you can see here, this is clearly using its feature connector, one of them. And it's using it to strictly provide output ports. And you can see here, we've got our, uh, you know, your standard... Uh, what do they call it? Right and left channel audio, as well as the uh, video out. We've got a composite. We've got a couple of S video ports. Um, and this allows in and out. This is a all in wonder card from ATI. But here you can see your standard feature connector. And what we've been able to do with that is both ingest and video out. So you could use a television set um, with your computer. So this attachment though, I mean, this is an ATI specific attachment, but it is not a proprietary attachment. And that means that an attachment like this could easily be bolted onto, you know, your Matrox card. Although I shouldn't say literally bolted because obviously this screw hole and this, you know, um, this hardware is specific to this card, but you could attach something like that, a third party one to one of these connectors. You could also attach that, you know, that connector here. Now here's where things get wild. So you could attach this type of, you know, extra set of ports. You could attach the, your frame grabber, and then your frame grabber might even have the ability to add extra connections as well as providing some of its own connections. So my God, you could get some serious connections happening. And by the way, these are not VGA ports on the, on there. What they are is actually um, they, I mean, they're the standard DB15 uh, VGA connector, but they actually can be uh, split off into RGBs, you know, composite. They can be switched off into, uh, or split off, I should say, BNC connector style things with the five connectors on the end uh, for your different colors. Um, and they can be obviously used for live broadcast stuff. So those are, you know, the VGA connector, but they're usually used with a splitter uh, it goes off to something else. So you're not going to attach a monitor to those. At least I should say, not a computer monitor. You might attach a video monitor to those. Um, but the point is, so if you've ever wondered like, hey, you know, I've got this extra connector on the top of my old card, or even <laughs> here's an even older card. This this is designed for CAD and, you know, 3D drafting and things like that. Why did these ancient cards have this connector here? And the answer to that is to bring in or send out additional video signals that you might use for uh, br bringing video in, sending video out, or enhancing the existing video that the card can produce. And so even back in the ISA days, they had these features available. Um, and it's not just limited to professional use, but most people, this would be, you know, sort of enthusiast level stuff. So most people are never gonna use the feature connector. Although I will say that, you know, if you don't want to, uh, you know, back in the 90s, if this was your graphics card or, you know, or this was your graphics card, then obviously you would want to spring for, you know, a cheap, you know, 50 to to $100 card that would run your MPEG just because MPEG video was the thing. It even came on the 95 CD with the Weezer video and being able to play those smoothly on a P2 or early P1 or whatever, you'd need some kind of video enhancement. Now, once all the different instruction sets came out in the modern CPUs, you didn't need that sort of stuff. So you wouldn't need a card like this. So this kind of went the way of the Dodo Bird after that and kind of went extinct. But you still might wish to have other ways to send out your video besides dro uh, dropping, you know, 300, 200, or even 500, depending on the quality of, you know, a capture card. Now, I get a lot of these for free. I forgot to mention the reason that says no picture on it is because a lot of places throw these out because they test them and go, oh, there's no video out on this strange looking video card. It's not a video card. Um, so uh, that's just a kind of little quick 
little micro thing on what is a feature connector? Why do I have it there? Do I need it? Will I ever use it? Well, it's up to you, but at least now you know why these cards have these extra plugs to allow you to do all kinds of cool things besides just upgrade your video RAM and uh, play some games.